Welcome my dear friends, I am KRule34 and I identify as the most breedable King K Rule player in Super Smash Bros Ultimate on the Nintendo Switch. And with that welcome to the second K Rules learning session video. We will be looking at three more replays today. One of them in shared content, two of them on YouTube where I can use my other recording program. So I can also draw shit if needed. So, we are going to start off, if I have seen it correctly, we've got two replays from K Rule players and one from a Falcon player against K Rule, or rather I know that the guy is not maining Falcon, but yeah, without much talk, let's start Yumo in-game. Uh, I gotta open up the Discord again. Okay, I can't spell... I, I don't know how to say his Discord name anyways. That's a bunch of letters. So yeah, um, we are going to look at this Elite Smash game of King K. Rule against Mewtwo. Alright, Mewtwo is kind of a weird matchup, but I would argue that I do know it decently well. So, we've got the yellow K rule immediately dropping down, projectiling twice. Sadly, I can't go back like this, which is why we are likely going to watch it twice, but yeah. So just throwing projectiles like that against the reflector character is usually pretty risky. If you want to throw a projectile immediately, I would say you should run off of the back of the platform and be reverse neutral B because you are further away then and usually do the neutral B a little lower so you don't have as much landing leg left or leg in general. So um, you can just react better to the cannonball being reflected or the, well, I wouldn't throw crown there. In general, it's, it's just safer. So, that back air hit. Yeah, that was Mewtwo being quite stupid. I would really say that's too many projectiles for this matchup, even though the Mewtwo is not playing it out great at the moment, just running away throwing Shadow Ball. Ah, the reverse try, I'm kinda sad. I wanted to see if you'd get the tech. That down air was quite risky to land there. It worked this time, but I definitely wouldn't do it often and definitely not multiple times in a row because it's very punishable. Alright, Mewtwo could pretty much get a free kill here, but decides to stay on ledge. Like... K. Rool cannot do much. If Mewtwo would have ran off there, B reversed his neutral B charge, then he would have been below stage. His back air covers so much, K. Rool doesn't get around that. Also, the sky recovering high is something he does too often that you can react to. This Mewtwo isn't going to ledge pretty much at all, but rather going high and then to mid stage which you can react to. If you see him going low before recovering, then you can go for two frames instead. When he's on platform, you up tilt a lot, which is definitely viable. You two had no invincibility on the ledge grab there, so not the best option. He really likes teleporting around a lot. So, maybe a little too many rolls. And once again, a lot of why this match works is this Mewtwo not playing well against projectiles at all. He gets hit by most of them and doesn't do much against it. There, he read a roll. This time, for example, you saw him not going high before already and could have gone for a two frame. That's definitely not how you should ledge trap there. So a few hints on that. So what you did is just 
you saw him being off stage in a vulnerable situation and you decided to go on platform, shoot the cannonball and drop down pretty much immediately. So, what's the problem about this? Well, the greatest part of using neutral B to ledge trap, even though you shouldn't do it all the time, I always say, um, is that you can cover everything by reacting. If you stay on platform with good spacing, they can jump. If they neutral get up or get up attack, you can drop down, react to that, suck them up. If they roll, you drop down and drift back. But you drop down before he even could do anything from ledge. With a spacing that just leaves neutral get up wide open. So he could just get up no problems, no pressure at all. Usually, especially since new to needed some time to grab ledge, I would have stayed pretty much like at the spot where you are right now, do a short hop and throw crown to mid stage and either go for a crown trump if you don't want that because it's like too difficult for you, do a two frame or try a two frame with down air or f tilt, especially on teleport recoveries, those are very strong because it's technically not a two frame because you have like four frames I believe to hit them and also use Nair, Forward Air, that stuff, that's just harder to react to. Instead, you got punished here now. Once again, you two reacting poorly to the crown. Yeah, that's really the big problem. He, this Mewtwo is not playing around the projectiles at all, which, which is like your main win condition because you throw out a lot of projectiles that are technically not really good in this matchup. They just work because of Mewtwo's missing matchup knowledge. So, small combo there, it's pretty much back to Eden. That crown there was quite risky, also a habit I do see by my from myself quite often. You really love rolling from ledge in multiple ways. Like you mix up your ledge get up options, you sometimes do like neutral get up, you sometimes jump get up, you sometimes roll get up. But if you do neutral get up or jump get up, you usually land very close to the ledge and do a roll afterwards. So it's like you still do somewhat of a roll get up with extra steps, which is very readable. Even though Mewtwo doesn't really adapt to it right now. In general, you roll a lot, sometimes twice in a row. Not the best option, usually. So, once again, you two acting poly there, but got good spacing here. This was yet another situation where he could have be reversed below the stage and just gotten the kill. Or, like in that spot, I believe he could have done a lot more. And once again, not playing too well around the projectiles. I am very sure he could have comboed off of the... Here, this time he tried doing a move there, but this time, like, in a very bad spot, because you were already at ledge height, or, uh, like, you were already where the ledge was. You didn't have your uppy activated at all. You to just did this thing the only time it really made no sense. Also, he up aired, which doesn't make sense if your opponent is above you off stage, I would say, in this situation. So, I already said a lot of stuff. I'll just go for a quick round with no pauses. Yeah, really what I said the most. You use a lot of not two non-committal options like back air and like crowns like that, projectiles in general against Mewtwo. A lot of it just worked because this Mewtwo wasn't playing the matchup well and just getting hit by a lot of stuff he could easily get around or even turn into his own advantage. For example, what I wanted to say here, you see the situation there, King K. Rule had to go from the very left and 
just had to go below ledge first, not really being able to defend himself. Maybe he could have thrown out a forward air, but Mewtwo could have just tagged that and went for a back air afterwards. And there's not much King K. Rool can do to recover in that situation. Which is also, if I saw that correctly, you don't use up air off stage to stall and get more momentum, which is something I would definitely do, especially in a spot like that, because it makes sure you can get further below ledge, making the exact thing I just talked about way harder for you to, to hit. So, as I said here, react to where he's recovering, and I know I said no pauses, I just, yeah, if I really need to, I will do that. So, you hit your up tilts there, but if you know you hit him, you can definitely go for a stronger move when he's on platform, especially because most of what he's doing is just charging Shadow Ball. So, yeah, very bad play by him here. Also, something I quickly wanted to say again. Um, on the last stock, as he reflected that one pen ball, he could have gotten a lot, a lot out of it, the Mewtwo, but just didn't. Here, the roll got caught once. Because, like, he... Uh, reflected the Ken Ball, which would have true comboed into the Shadow Ball he had charged. And because the Shadow Ball wasn't charged too much and it's K rule, I would actually say, well, I would think that the Shadow Ball would have comboed into like forward air or nair or something, getting you to a big combo, but only getting him like 20 as it was. Here is like the biggest problem of new to very visible. You throw crown, he tries to attack you, tries to do a combo, always gets hit by reverse crown. He's just really not ready. Once again, the very same role you do quite often due to not adapting to it though. That is not a good suck there if Mewtwo's on platform because you can just outspace that. I definitely would have gone for a grab instead of an up tilt because it gives you more reward in that situation. You can try forward throw dash attack, which I believe here is the situation where he could have comboed, by the way. Like, I don't think... Um, if he would have just recovered straight upwards, he would have gotten hit by the up B, by the way, and he would have uh, had to fight on. So, yeah. So run up on or just run down off this stuff like i know i've talked a lot about the mewtwo i hope you can kind of also adapt that to your own place that for example use less projectiles against mewtwo like if it works all right do them it will generally not work though this mewtwo was not playing around many of your risky options at all which got him hit a lot, really a lot of times. Your ledge get up options are usually pretty predictable and I already gave kind of a quick rundown on ledge trapping there. Because ledge trapping is a very important aspect for K. Rule. Also you really didn't go for any two frames which I would always say you should do. Like just go right to ledge. Spam some short top down airs, you will learn the timing if you just try enough. I mean, I don't get it consistently on Wi-Fi myself, but it's definitely something to go for. And if you don't get the down air, well, you can still go for a ledge trap. Not the ledge trap you did, but like neutral air, forward air, throw crown to cover space. That's like a very big thing I feel like you're doing. You are throwing your projectiles to deal damage and combo. But K. Rool is pretty much a trapper character. You use a lot of his stuff to cover space. To take away places where your opponent can go. To just take away your opponent's options. Which you didn't use your projectiles for. But it worked because Mewtwo... Like you throw, for example, a cannonball expecting you to, to either reflect it in this situation because he can do that, which kind of negates it. But especially against a non-reflect character, 
Wie for example, shoot a cannonball if they are below the right platform here towards them while you're down. To get them to jump up the platform and meet them there with, for example, a forward air. Because you know they will be up there because you just baited them into going there. If they don't do that you, that, you can also, like, because the other real options they have is rolling through the cannonball, which is definitely punishable. And shielding the cannonball, which is, with cannonball being very slow, also very punishable. Because you can get a true grab on their shield if they do so. So you should use your projectiles more to just, like, cover stuff. More play around your projectiles or have them play around your projectiles instead of trying to use the projectiles themselves as a win condition. So I hope that was kind of helpful. Let's move on to the next King K rule. Alright, we are back with a little worse lighting. Now it's better. The thing is that I actually, for lighting, mainly use the monitors I'm actually looking at with how I'm doing it, so yeah. Uh, well, next up, we are looking at a game of Amy K. Remain, who I know from, like, a clip server I'm at for not... It's not a clip server, it's not base community server, I'm just mostly there for the community montage. So, um... I'll say she because Amy is like a name more commonly for girls. If that's wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, has sent in a replay against a Daisy playing a blue King K rule on the visually least appealing legal stage in the game and I will stand by that. I hope everything works fine with the audio because last time I used this program for some reason the audio was like messed up my own audio that was in the video where I talked about me playing against the third best player in Germany. But yeah, let's jump into it. This is YouTube, so we are just gonna be watching it once because I can scroll back. Uh, yeah, more attention on the beginning. The drop down cannonball, once again, I would say, even though Daisy doesn't have a reflect, if you do it, um, with the B-reverse further back, it's just harder for Daisy to get in and punish you immediately. The crown they're hitting. That was good trying to read the jump. But she didn't jump, so try to remember that. Going on. A little risky of a back air, but you can do that. Yeah, near at this percent. A jab doesn't work anymore, but a dash attack is usually true if you don't mess it up. So go for a dash attack after a neutral air like that. It's like your best option usually. Dash attack in neutral, I've got a lot to say about. Actually, no, I don't. Just don't use dash attack in neutral. <laughs> it's not a good move because it's insanely laggy. I'm personally still saying that it's like the third or fourth worst move King K. Rule has in general, even though I see people saying this is like a very good dash attack all the time. My opinions, I guess. So what I'm already seeing a lot too, um, you love dropping with the counter there against the Daisy because of Turnip. Which she can definitely react to, which she doesn't seem to do right now. And just uh, jump over you, hit the turn up there, combo something out of that. You can get punished a lot for doing those predictable moves here. Against Peach and Daisy, I usually prefer also going below ledge, which many are scared of because of the uh, turn ups. Like in the spot where you were, I believe. Like. Now I can draw. Around somewhere here. I would uh, drop down, throw a crown here to like uh, scare Daisy a little, have her not throw a turnip like here immediately. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, then I would go down further. Then I can draw here. 
Um, if she tries to throw something down, you up air that because your up air beats turnip, which is important to know. And then you go up. If they don't even try to throw something down, just go up with up air as soon as you are right below the ledge. So that's what I would do here. It's less punishable. Alright, the up the, the forward tilt there with Daisy on platform, alright. Here you threw a crown like that, but when Daisy wasn't standing on stage. I feel like you like swinging a little too much when you are off stage. Pretty much every time you try to hit Daisy with something. And here you throw out many dash attacks again. They do work right now, but aren't optimal. Here, you are... T That's the biggest thing I'm seeing right now. You are too greedy when in disadvantage off stage. You try to get onto stage as well as possible. Uh, which is understandable because K rules up here is quite punishable. But I would try air dodging to ledge if possible. And if not, don't try... Definitely don't try swinging as much. You try to hit Daisy pretty much every time you fall down there, which gets you punished now. You also just try to land there. Coverable. And now you are also in a kind of scary situation because the Mr. Saturn is there. But Daisy has a problem against roll get-ups. You do those a lot, but because they work. I don't know if I would have thrown away the Mr. Saturn there. Here you, here you should stall with up air, not throw crown. Because you get below ledge more. Yeah, that's what the text said. Biggest problem of the gameplay that Amy herself saw is um, misinputting up and sometimes. That Daisy is very scared of you, I feel like, even though you are at 200%. And that is what Daisy can't do. In this spot, if you would have up aired, this is a prime example. Use up air to stall here instead of crown. You get below ledge better. I believe you can get on the other side of this turnip before it hits. And then you can recover hogging uh, here, like immediately driving at ledge. And you don't have to go high like this, which got you, which... God, why can't I talk right now? You know what I mean. Because you didn't up air there, you got into a bad situation. Daisy missed the punish though, but now finally got the kill. And I do say finally, even though I, I'm always a guy to want K rule to win. Good uh, catch there. Uh, because like you were at 280, it's just time to lose a stock. You don't use projectiles a lot in general so far, I feel like. The guy before I said he used projectiles too much. But I feel like you actually use them too little, especially like to just cover options. What I really love doing against Peach and Daisy is just shoot a cannonball straight from the ledge when they are off stage. Because it limits their options quite well. They either have to go low or um, float above. They cannot really do... You can react to what they are doing way better if they only have the option go definitely high or go definitely low. Back air a little too committal there. You pretty much use projectiles not much at all, yeah? Good grab and good up throw. The up air definitely too greedy though. And once again, this could also be a misinput. What the hell? That that was a very bad play by Daisy, I have to say. And once again, the reflect. But Daisy lets it work. That's definitely a problem on the Daisy here. Another problem on that Daisy. Was that the eye? What? So yeah, um...
some of these things are actually pretty similar to what I told the guy before. You use quite some options that work because Daisy isn't playing around them well. I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> Man, I should really become mana fight coach. I would be so good at that. <laughs> what can I do better? I forgot that we played. So yeah, the uppies you said yourself. Your biggest problem is 100% clear to me. Um, disadvantage while being off stage. You try to swing a lot. You try to get damage off of it somehow. Which isn't what you should do there. Carol's disadvantage, especially off stage, is bad. And your priority is to somehow, like, stay alive from it. So try to use up air more to stall. I don't know if you have a stick jump because I've heard people before saying, yeah, I don't stall with up air because I always burn my jump because I use tap jump. Fellow tap jump user here, use your C stick to up air. I actually like people think always sound like that's so weird but i do every aerial except nair because that doesn't work with my c stick and i think that's very good and tilt stick with Rule is also very good uh yeah um back to the topic so you don't use up air stalling off stage which usually put usually puts you in worse situations and also spots where you can get punished harder I feel like in this matchup you are very scared of turnip being thrown down. Which you don't have to be. K Rule can with up air encounter stall very well to get on the left side of the turnip. And if there you can usually recover pretty well. If uh, the turnip really gets thrown towards you and you are not an up yet. Just up air the turnip because up air beats it. And other than that, Daisy will probably try to stage spike you if you are close to stage, but that's really not a problem if you just know tag. So that's really the biggest thing. You try to get stuff out of being in disadvantage, playing committal because of that, even though your main focus should really be staying alive, which you can't really... That was definitely wrong, Rod, I just said. You can stay alive, but you usually cannot, like, get credit yourself if your opponent is playing that out well. And Daisy didn't react to roll getups much, so I will not really judge you for doing many of those. I know I kind of did with the guy before. I just don't know if you... Roll get up that often against other players as well is the problem. Other than that, as I said, use your projectiles to cover space. You barely use them at all. Definitely, like, be sure they are uh, kind of safe. Also know that you can armor turnips, um, except for Stitch Face. I believe every other turnip you can armor, but I could be wrong. Or Crown just beats them out. I'm honestly not 100% sure about that right now. Yeah, the high uppies you said yourself sometimes actually did work, but are uh, really rarely a good option with K Rule. Other than that, what can I say? You didn't get many grabs, which is partly because of the matchup. If you did get some, they were used pretty well. Dash attack, very committal, use that a little too often in, this, uh, in neutral. And you maybe threw out a little too much back air in, like, I don't even want to call it advantage situation if all you got is like a forward air or a grab or a jab in neutral. Where you just try to go for jump read back air a lot. Which against this daisy was pretty good because she definitely double jumped in disadvantage way too often but once again i don't know if you do that against other players as well if so rather adapt if they jump or not and yeah i don't think you uh used like 
neutral be a single time? Is that possible? Neutral B is like definitely a top four move of K rule. Um, and I want to quickly see because what I didn't really look at uh, give me double the speed. Did you even get in a situation where you could ledge trap Daisy? Because if so, I want to take a look at that again. If not, that's kind of a problem of the replay because I can't give you feedback on a very important part of K Rule's gameplay in that case. But I feel like actually most of this game you were off stage, which isn't uncommon for this matchup. Alright, uh, I was talking a little too much. Here, it isn't really ledge trapping here, but edge guarding, so. You shot the cannonball high here, which is not bad. Like I said, how you could use the cannonball to limit Peach and Daisy's options pretty well. But you shot it like. In a spot where Daisy still just could have gone high, medium, or low. Especially because she had a jump. Floating here. Yeah, she tries to go for that. You try going for down air. But uh, she already grabbed ledge, so the down air definitely was too late. And took away the opportunity to actually get a ledge trap. So, do you get an actual ledge trap situation and not like this here that's the thing against peach daisy like they love going high which makes sure you don't ledge trap pretty much and yeah that's kind of a problem as i said because ledge trapping is very crucial to carol's gameplay here you miss and put the up b so you didn't get anything Here, as I said, with the up air stalling, you definitely would have been in a better spot. Otherwise, he would have died earlier there if Daisy didn't mess up. Reading the jump because Peach and Daisy's love to go high, which makes sense. Yeah, so if in a future episode you maybe want to send in a, another replay where you also got ledge trapping, feel free to do that. Obviously, you don't have to do that. But it may be, depending on how your ledge trapping is, would be helpful. Or, honestly, you can also just take a listen, know yourself how your ledge trapping is. And listen to what I said about the guy before this replay. About ledge trapping, what you can do, what you should do, what you shouldn't do there. So yeah, that's kind of a problem of the replay or the matchup in general you sent in. Other than the points I said, neutral, um, except for the dash attacks, pretty good. Maybe a little too late. Not enough crown mostly, I would say, because especially in this matchup, it's just not too bad. And yeah, an advantage. Advantage, you usually got good strings, no fat insane strings that kill insanely early. It's like a decent advantage, not insane, but not bad either. Alright, so now let's get to the last replay. So, we are now looking at Hespan's Captain Falcon. You may know the name. We've looked at his re uh, at his montages in both watching Carol montages until I'm impressed videos. Um, I also linked a video of his in a community post once that he made about playing against me, which I will take credit for. That is his most clicked video by far, I believe, at this point. <laughs> And yeah, now he sent in a Captain Falcon replay. I know his main is technically Gandalf, but he's also playing against another member of my community Discord, Silent Killer, the K rule. We are gonna take a look at that. Alright, first off, I don't know what rule set you played on if you just played um, Omega only. Why would you do that to yourself if you actually kind of chose? FD as Falcon against Casual. Not a great idea, I would say. 
So even though there's a Carol in this, I'll mostly focus on the Captain Falcon because he's who sent in the replay, obviously. Um, I don't think I have to, like, tell you why that's not optimal. Yeah! <laughs> The grab dash attack, classic punish. And that down B also was not safe, but the F smash, well, maybe a miss input from the K rule. I will take a look at both a little. Like, I honestly don't know if you're trolling me right now, because the games I played against your Falcon, it didn't take you like 20 seconds to throw out multiple Falcon kicks, a random upbeat, and a Falcon punch. Like, yeah, you know yourself that those are way too committal. Especially like Falcon punch. The reverse crown there from Silent Killer, I definitely get. I don't know if those F smashes are miss inputs. I wasn't ready to like get sad watching one of those today. So that was the second time you went for a falcon punch as a ledge trap and then you got sucken cucked. Honestly, I don't remember you playing like that against me, I'll be honest. So, uh, you definitely overcommit like pretty much every move you do. You only throw out like committal specials most of the time and not Falcon's fast safe moves, which gets you punished a lot. You are pretty much just not using what makes Captain Falcon good. And that's his combos, his good frame data. You can try to go for the two frame there. Because Falcon down air, like a two frame is pretty much as well as K rules own. Alright, good play by Killer. Yeah, you also get called out for... If you try to land. That's similar to what I just said about Amy. You try landing and getting own advantage off of it. Which you usually shouldn't try. Your priority in this advantage isn't to get into advantage, but back to neutral. You pretty much always drift towards your opponent and throw out down air or down B, which just lose 2k rids up air. So... This time you didn't, which got you the stock, because that up smash was a hard read and a way to committal. Those F smashes from Silent Killer confuse me, like, they are playing well so far, but those F smashes definitely don't go for me there. Yeah, it's just over committing a lot and it feels like Nearly every move you throw out is either a panic option because you want to land or a way too hard read with no basis to go on. And uh, yeah, spots like this, a big problem that you definitely also have, you hold in. I know that from playing against you, you also have kind of an air dodge in habit which gets punished quite sometimes, but you just hold in so much this game. Your priority seems to always be hit the opponent, deal damage. But that isn't what Smash is all about. Sometimes you have to try play defensively. Get stuff in, uh, like, get defensive stuff in. Just get into a decent situation again. You hold in a lot, which is very predictable, especially combined with usually throwing out committal moves afterwards. So, in this matchup especially, 
Try to play more bait and punish like. Try to punish K rule making stupid moves and don't go in trying to just hit K rule. Because that's what. That's exactly what K rule wants in this matchup. He wants you to overcommit, to leave yourself open to punishes. Which is why you are pretty much exactly doing what K Rule usually wants. Like for example the knee out there. Side B into knee like that is just not true. Yeah. Why are you throwing out so many Falcon punches? That's like a bottom free move in the game. Don't. Like, I'm kind of confused the counter hit there, I'll be honest. Like, that's still a hit. But you definitely see how it killed you at how much percent? 39% because once again, for the third time you did that. So... A few words I also want to say about Silent Killer because I still am a K remain. A generally decent gameplay. Advantage I would say once again, you try more chipping in the damage instead of getting a big advantage state. Um, those random smash attacks sometimes, I don't know if they are what you mean to do. If so, uh, don't. And yeah, I quickly want to take a fast look at this game again. It's quite short as it is already. Uh, maybe I will find something else for either of those players. Yeah, so uh, has buns to you. You definitely just overcommit way too much. And the title of this video is Silent Killer Knows the Falcon Matchup. Honestly, from what this looks like, I wouldn't actually technically, like, I don't know if he knows the Falcon matchup. The thing is, you just don't play like Falcon usually does. Kind of bait, uh, bait heavy in this matchup because rushdown can be difficult, but also trying to rush in often and, like, getting massive edge guards and advantage states because that's just what Captain Falcon's greatest stre strength is. Insane combos and edge guards on K Rule. And the problem to even get in against this pretty slippery character in the first place. The thing is, in this match it looks less like Silent Killer knows the Falcon matchup, but you just pretty much do move by move what he would want you to do. So, the matchup is definitely something you should look at. Your Falcon is just way too committal and definitely holding in too much. So try working on that. If you want to try trying, you can also hit me up and we play some games we did that before I know, so... You want like to get some advice while playing. Feel free to hit me up. That also counts for the other people uh, in this video. And like in general. If any of you kind of want some advice outside of this video format. And or want to play some games. Just hit me up on Discord. I can promise that I will be able to play. But... I'll usually try to get to playing with you uh, at some time. So yeah, that's it for this episode of K Rules Learning Session. I hope I could be helpful, especially for the first two people because I just can talk more about K Rule, but also has buns, yeah. This was kind of a good episode for me because two people were K Rules uh, with uh, some problems that I can definitely spot out and the last one like That's obviously no hate against anyone 
uh, the last one was just the one with the most obvious flaws that I can also see as a non falcon player. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, feel free to like and or subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. If you don't want to miss any more erotic content, ring the bell. And if you know someone who might benefit from videos like this, share this with them. Hope you have a good day. Bye.